Hello, I'm JW, and this video we have some dimmer switches to have a look at, and here's one of them. Now, this is a fairly old switch, uh, I can't remember if a property was being refitted, and as you can see, it's got uh, some normal switches on the same plate as the dimming one, and uh, there's the back of it, it's actually made by MK. Now, these are probably sort of 30 odd years old, and the dimming part of this no longer works, it's basically stuck on the full brightness all the time, so it's obviously something that's failed internally, but after three decades plus, then not too surprising. And I've also got this single one, which is just a uh, single switch and the dimmer on a single plate there. And uh, say these are pretty old, so I thought we'd have a look inside, see how they're constructed. Certainly uh, going to be different from the modern varieties. And one major change here, of course, is that the uh, switch is the on and off, and then it's just this control for the brightness. Of course, new ones tend to have the uh, things combined into a single control. So. Certainly a bit different, so uh, let's open them and see what's inside. So these are the dimmer switches here. Uh, this particular single one, actually there's actually a crack in the uh, plate there, so these are fairly old. And uh, what we've got here basically is the uh, on and off switch here, and then this uh, slide or rolly control is the brightness. And so this is considerably different to the uh, modern ones, which generally just have a single knob in the centre. And then that uh, obviously does the uh, both the brightness and the on and off function. Typically, it's either uh, press the knob or on and off, or in some cases, it's turn the knob and it sort of clicks on and then starts at zero brightness, and you turn it further to get to the full brightness. But uh, so this is actually a separate switch and the uh, knob there. So here's the back of the device, and it's in two halves here. This side here is essentially just a normal uh, two-way switch. So we've got uh, a sort of common terminal here, and then the two. Uh, outputs there. So in one position these two are connected, and the other position it's uh, these two that are connected. And notice it says fixed load there, which obviously is corresponding to the uh, variable load over here. So in this case, if you wanted to use the dimming function, you would connect here and to one or both of these. And if not, then you would just use the uh, side here as a normal switch. And one real use for this is that uh, it enables you to have both uh, a fixed output and the uh, variable one at the same time. So you can either have some lamps in the room at sort of a fixed brightness and then some on the dimmer. Or another thing might be if you had say a uh, extractor fan or something in your bathroom, you could have the lights on the uh, dimmed output. And then the uh, fixed output would just be the on and off to operate the fan or uh, other similar devices. Generally putting a dimmer onto a fan is uh, going to cause trouble. And uh, this one mated to maximum of 500 watts, so uh, that's pretty uh, substantial. And again, made in England, as uh, most of the MK stuff uh, was at one time, and a fair amount of it still is. And it's number 8192. And at the top here, where it says top, obviously, just a note there about uh, for single pole one where you use L2. So that would be uh, this one and this one, or uh, that one and that one. Uh, the only reason it's got that is if you put this part at the top, then it just means that uh, the switch is the correct way round. If you used the other one, you'd find the switch was essentially in the opposite operation. And the uh, dimming part there is just a, a rotary control. It does have markings on there, so it's a bit difficult to uh, see there, but essentially got some wide spacing here. And as you turn it around, uh, more of the narrow spacing comes in for the uh, full brightness. So a bit of a crack there on the uh, face plate, and it's of course caked in uh, paint and emulsion and uh, goodness knows what else. But other than that, it's in reasonable condition. And so the dimming part of this has actually failed, so the variable output is basically now the same as the fixed. It's just at the full brightness all the time, so obviously the component has failed internally. Now this one is very similar. Uh, the difference is it's got an extra two switches over here, but uh, if we have a look on the back, so it's pretty much the same kind of arrangement. Uh, this side is exactly the same, so it's the single switch for on and off and then the rotary control for the dimming function. And again, you've got the fixed and the variable outputs. And then this side is a totally separate set of uh, switches here, and it's basically just two uh, two-way switches, uh, the dividing line being there. So these three are one switch and those three are another. And again, it's the standard arrangement with the common, and then the common is connected to either here or here, depending on the position of the switch, and the other one, it's this common, is connected to either here or here. And you can use those obviously on a uh, just as a single switch or in a conjunction with others to switch it from multiple places. So this size is the same, the same 500 watts, and uh, these over here are actually rated uh, 5 amps, and uh, the X there indicates that they're suitable for use with inductive loads. 
they don't need to be derated. 5 amp switch is fairly uncommon now, they're normally 10, but uh, when this was made of course it was a uh, 5. And it's interesting to note that a substantial amount of copper or brass on these terminals compared to new ones. These are actually uh, huge compared to the uh, new ones, even though this is only rated for 5 amps. So let's have a look inside here. Now um, modern dimmers, and in fact probably these as well, are relatively simple electronically. It's primarily just two uh, semiconductor components. And there's generally an inductor or a uh, coil of wire in there as well. So uh, we'll just have a look inside here. And say so obviously one of the uh, components in here has failed because say, it's now on uh, permanently at the full brightness. So probably a lamp failed or something caused a bit of surge and uh, damaged the uh, component inside. So let's just see if we can get inside this one. So unfortunately, as with uh, a lot of these, it's covered in uh, great chunks of... Uh, paint and uh, filler and uh, whatever that might be so I just want to rather careless with the decorating couldn't be bothered to undo the two screws getting it to the wall they'd rather just uh, daub around it with a huge brush and uh, trowel on the uh, filler to cover up their mistakes something which does seem to be uh, incredibly common so I've got four screws on the back there just to uh, presumably hold the back cover in position and then hopefully the whole thing will just uh, open and we can see what we've got inside. So that's the uh, on and off switch there, just a sort of a uh, pivot thing inside the plate there and it's just a cut out hole for the rolly knob. Yeah, and that's exactly the same sort of stand, just the uh, spring piece on the back. And that just goes down inside here onto the uh, contact piece, so it's either in the uh, position there, so you've got that side and this one, or when it's pressed at the bottom, it's the one there and the one over here. So perfectly uh, standard sort of switch there. Now the dimming part itself, we've got uh, all the various components in a fairly uh, random fashion. Notice there's no circuit board in this, as you would uh, generally find on the newer varieties. It's all uh, just sort of soldered uh, together and just placed in the frame like that. Uh, we've got this metal plate here. Notice it's uh, extending up here, presumably to uh, dissipate the heat from the component which is attached to the back of it. And we'll just lift that up there. So we've got a single uh, three pin uh, semiconductor on the back there. And so this will obviously be for uh, heat dissipation. And that's the uh, inductor in the back there in that red uh, plastic covering. And then we've just got the connections to the output terminal at the top here. And again the uh, other connection here at the bottom. Again that would be your essentially your fixed uh, it says on the back there, the fixed and the uh, variable at the top there. And of course these two are not actually connected to anything internally, that would be used as one of the sort of inputs as it were. So uh, if you just had it as a single switch it would be coming in here. When the switch is on it would just pass through to the output here which is your fixed one and then via the uh, components to the variable output at the top. So interesting it's actually marked on the uh, knob there, maximum and minimum the angle there, a bit difficult to see with the uh, light there, but uh, yes, maximum and uh, minimum. So yes, presumably if you uh, examine the side of it in this one, then it's uh, actually visible in the room, so maximum and uh, minimum, although uh, from the front of the plate that's not uh, terribly obvious to uh, the, uh, anyone just looking at it without seeing it before. Now I've had a look at the various uh, components in here. This uh, adjustable knob is uh, obviously a variable resistor, and the value of this varies between about 4.5k in the uh, smallest position up to about 490k in the full position. I'm assuming this has been uh, custom made for this application because obviously it's got the uh, markings on it and uh, only the two connections on the back there. Generally they uh, tended to have three but uh, just the two there. Uh, other things here, that's the uh, single coil there or the inductor. And that's just a coil wound on a uh, ferrite uh, former. It looks like uh, ferrite anyhow. That's the manky old foam in the bottom just to uh, pad that, stop any uh, vibrations. Uh, three capacitors, a uh, little small one here which uh, is uh, 0 0.01. And then you've got these two others uh, which are 0.1s. Those will test out fine. Two resistors here, we've got a 47k and the 120k. 
And then this device here, which is a Q4006, uh, appears to be a DIAC and a TRIAC in the same package, uh, which obviously is cheaper for manufacturing because you don't have to buy uh, two separate items. And this is what's failed. It's basically uh, permanently on now, so uh, regardless of what you apply to the gate, it's uh, shorted internally, so it's permanently on. And it's basically the sort of textbook uh, dimmer circuit, so you've got the... Uh, DIAC and the TRIAC there, which does the switching, and of course the variable resistor and a few other components just for filtering and uh, suppression of any interference. A metal plate, of course, just for a heat sink to dissipate any heat from that. And if you look on the plate here, it's a bit difficult to see, but it's, uh, there's actually a date uh, stamped on here. Let's get the uh, angle there, and you can see the date there, 11th of November 1977. So this is uh, sort of 38 years old and say so it doesn't work anymore, but uh, not surprising after that length of time. It was probably a bulb or something, or a lamp busted and uh, surge sort of uh, killed the uh, actual device there. So it's now uh, shorted and on permanently. So a uh, fairly uh, straightforward device, and uh, the sort of 1970s show through there, and the fact they haven't bothered to use a circuit board, it's just the various components sort of uh, tacked to soldering together and uh, fitted inside the uh, plastic case there. But uh, Nevertheless, it's not too bad, and uh, modern dimmers are uh, pretty horrendous in construction as well, though they uh, generally do use a circuit board, but uh, very similar design in terms of the actual uh, circuit layout. Now, the other one is going to be exactly the same, so I'll leave that one in one piece. Uh, not much point uh, dismantling that one as well. It's, of course, it's going to be the same inside. This has also failed, and it's going to be the same uh, failure mode with that uh, semiconductor obviously failing internally. And uh, so the other components on this tested out just fine. And uh, the uh, switching part there is, of course, just a separate switch module, although obviously when you bought this it would have come as a uh, single unit like that. So you've got your uh, three switches on it, basically, two normal ones and then the dimming one on that side. So until next time, thanks for watching.